Now what I want to talk about is the income statement. Now, once again, we're in the business world, and uh, the income statement is one of the two major documents that you publish to Wall Street uh, when you report your earnings every three months. Earnings being profit. I don't know why we pick another word for it, but it's profit. So this document is also the pretty much the heartbeat of how the management team of the company operates. So you have these staff meetings, usually on Monday, bright and early, and all the VPs and the president come together and they, they work off this document as the, the heart, as the guideline of how to operate your company. And it's just um, pretty simple math. Um, you start up here with the number 100, always that's the top line, and then you subtract 45, in our case we were running at 55% gross margins, so that meant that our cost of goods were 45%. These are in percentages, you don't write the percentages, and um, except for COGS, I think it's the only one you have minus signs on. So I don't know why the, I don't know why the parentheses aren't used, but they're not. Okay, so then what we do is we, we say we're going to put 7% into sales. Now this is 7% of the total revenue we get, revenue we get 8% into marketing. Okay, so sales guys are going, they're flying around the country meeting with um, distributors and um, they're going to um, training seminars and they're, they're making sure that these products move um, through the, the, they're selling. And the, the thing that the salespeople have a word to say, we want you to pull our products through the channel, the channel being all the distribution. We want pull. And they say, if we're pushing the product out the door, it won't sell. You know, trying to get discounts and trying to do promotions with distributors. They want pull. They want the customers calling up and begging for the product. So this, this organization always talks about push versus pull. These guys work with public relations organizations and advertising. They, they're the ones that create the, the concept of the company in the public's uh, mind. This is a very interesting group. I, I like this one a lot. Of, I don't gravitate towards sales. I really like marketing because it's pretty strategic. Engineering is, in our case, was 10%. Once again, the Wall Street analysts watch this like a hawk because they want to see how much money you're putting back into the business to develop new products. If this is zero, then you're going to make no new products. So they want to see big numbers here. Very, very important to reinvest. Uh, the next one we have is GNA, and that's general and administrative. Those are administrative assistants and um, the finance people and the president. They're all, they're not involved in the actual making of the widgets. They're, they're, they surround their, in, their infrastructure that helps the company run general and administrative. Then the last one is operations. And these are the guys that actually order the parts, get the boards made, put the packaging, ship them out the door. These guys, once engineering says it's done, then these guys take over and ship the product, build the product and ship it. And then at the end, you have a number. So 45, so we're going to add up all these numbers, and then we're going to find out what our pre-tax profit is. Finally, we use the word profit. Finally, after all this margin stuff, 45 plus 15 is 60, plus 10 is 70, plus 10 is 80. So that means we're going to subtract 80 from 100, so we're going to have 20% pre-tax profit. Now, the federal government gets in here and basically takes half of your profit right off the top, just <laughs> federal and state, they just take it. So. Um, so we, we say here that half of it has gone to taxes and everybody just, just, that's it. The government takes it. So that leaves us 10% after tax profit. Now this is, um, this is good. This is a good number. Um, for example, um, this is not a great number. For example, when you add up Cisco's numbers, this thing is a 20. And our venture capitalists would constantly come in and say, I want 20% after tax profit. It was like a drumbeat. I want this 20%, which means that you've got a big number here, like a 40, which means this has to be very small 
because this is nominally what a company runs at, a healthy company. So if you get if you can get your cost of goods way down, like Microsoft, then these this this number is pretty much a constant, and this one goes through the roof. So Microsoft, Cisco, Intel, they have huge, they have very efficient operations. They're very they charge a lot of money for each unit and they make a lot of margin. So this is the income statement that we ran by in Global Village, the modem company. And then an internal terms that are very common, um, which I don't I definitely think the Wall Street wouldn't know about. And one is called budget to actual. And so you what you do is you take all these percentages and then you multiply by the revenue. How much what's the total amount of money coming in? How much how many units are we selling at a hundred? So let's assume we're selling a thousand units. So our total revenue would be a hundred thousand dollars. And then seven percent of that would be seven thousand dollars. So this guy, the sales guy, would have seven thousand dollars to work with if we were assuming that we had a one hundred dollar product and it was it was we were selling a thousand of them. And so therefore the total revenue was $100,000 and the sales guy gets 7% of that. So he would have $7,000 to work with. Marketing would have 8,000 and on and on. So in the company, you're always trying to drive this number down. And they're always saying, hey, if you just give us more volume, then this percentage will go down. Um, these guys are always saying we need more, we need a, more of a team. Oh, Every single department is always asking the president. They're making their point in the staff meetings to the president and saying, I need this. Please, I need this. If you do this, we can sell in Europe. If we do this, we'll create pull. Um, and the engineering is saying, if we make the product better, that'll they'll be, we'll win better awards. Um, so this, this number, this process, is the decision of the president. And there's a constant effort to draw, to keep making the product cheaper and cheaper and with that comes volume if you can get volume then you can buy your parts in like 10,000 or 100,000 pieces a month and the vendors will give you good price uh, drop the price for you so it, once you are in here um, budget to actual is you you come up with the how much you think you're going to spend for the month and in this case we the sales guy had 7% so he was allowed to sell his budget for the month was seven thousand dollars, and so let's say he came in at eight thousand dollars, then he his what he said was I was supposed to be at seven, and I came in at eight. So this is what you aim for, and then everything goes crazy, and so you're in a firefight. There's no running a company is kind of like flying a plane in a in a storm. You you don't have good bearings. You're flying on IR or in IFR in instruments and you're you're trying to competitions coming at you and prices are going down and so it's a very dynamic system and um, you have to be you have to be ready for uh, course changes especially in small companies or startup companies things are so volatile um, I, I'm going to be interested in working in the oil business with these big monster companies and seeing how they allocate their numbers. I haven't studied them like a financial analyst, but it's going to be really exciting. Let's take um, Exxon, for example, or let's take British Petroleum. They're running ads saying um, we're moving into um, wind, solar, and natural gas. And they're you know basically telling everybody, you know, they've got the future figured out and... Um, don't worry, everything's great. And that's their marketing department because they get a constant stream of cash and they need to put that into advertising. I mean, you kind of wonder, why does Coca-Cola ever advertise? I mean, who on the planet doesn't know Coca-Cola? But it's just a constant machine running, constant machine, marketing getting its percentage, advertising going, and it's just, and so analysts like this. It's just a machine that just runs and runs and runs, and they all want to see this after-tax profit rise. So this is this is the way the inside of a company works, and um, let's see, I'll talk about the balance sheet next. All right, I'll see you. Bye.